Good day, gang. So we're um, we're playing engines again. I just thought we'd have a bit of a look at some of these rings. Now, that's the second ring. This is one of the ones that were that was uh, partially stuck. So we can get good looks. Good looks about it. Let's have a look here. doesn't like to focus much but what I want to show you is that you look at the dull finish on the edge of that that's the second ring this is the top ring it's, it still has hone marks on the side of there and not only that but the You've heard me speak about the piston rings before when they're flogged out. They get really sharp. You can shave with them, but this is really, really in good shape. And it shows no evidence of getting hot and doing things like that. Another good thing to show, they've got still plenty of spring in them. If they snap, like that, <laughs> it's still good. Well, not anymore, but... You know what I mean? Same as this one. Snap. So, I don't know. But, <clears throat> over in the parts supply, um, got some new rings. And we've got the pistons all cleaned up. The grooves actually come up really good. All our oil holes are all, all cleaned up. I have some, mm, let's see. We have a new clutch. We have big end bearings. The gasket set, water pump. Seven time belt. Uh, New set of lifters, oil pressure switch, um, what's this, bearings, what are these then, oh, Conrod bearings, I wonder what they are, find out, thermostat, brand new radiator, so, We'll be alright. I think I'll uh, whack some rings on a piston and start putting them back together. Another thing we're changing. These are, these are usually the cause of most overheating. As you can see, this one's starting to go around that little join there. It's hard plastic. And that's where they snap. They snap right. <laughs> Just like that. Well, you don't want to break. But... That's what happens. They break off there and they cook. So, genuine Toyota, aftermarket. We put a steel one in there. And that'll make it more better. Well, I've started to reassemble already. <clears throat> you can join me if you wish. These oil rings. What they tell you to do is you put this little section in first but find where its ends are it looks like the ends are up here yep. so there are the ends there it says you slide them on here and we don't want we don't want the ends near those oiler holes in the piston and we make sure that these oh, a bit, it's a bit of a struggle going one-handed but we've got to make sure that they come together get together go on that's why we went right in the groove there we go all right 
they got to come together. Now this one here, that, that, that spring has got to sit inside that little groove in there, that little slot. So I have to use two hands to open this up. We want to keep this end about 45 from that end there. Here's where our oil holes are here. So we're going to have him here. We're going to have this fella over here. So I'll hook that up now. So we've got our gaps all separated around here. If you know me and your old G, OG, <coughs> you know that I like this flood. Flood, flood, flood. Plenty of oil in there. Plenty in the cylinder. Plenty on the rod bearing. Plenty on the crank. Much oil as I can as I'm putting it together. I'm going to put the ring compressor on now. We'll pop him in the hole. as you can. Pretty good setup there. You can't go wrong with the con with the con rod. It'll only go the one way. Seems to be quiet around here at the moment, so I've got a bit of a chance to mess about with it. The head hasn't come back yet, so... Just like to make sure that... ...that's all nice and snug. I'll change your position, eh? Okay. up in here. Get down in here. Already got ample in there. Top of the front. Down the hole. Tap, tap, tap. A little snugger. In the hole. He's in. Well, if you were on that fun for the ride, you know you just hit the floor, and that's not a good thing for the camera. Okay, where were we? Ah, pistons in the hole. Each piston, I always like to. I like to fit the cordwood berry up. Tension it. Plenty of oil in there. There's our rod cap. It goes the one way. Like so. Inch pair of foot pounds. Not much at all. Plus, plus, 
see those little white marks there, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Plus 90 degrees. thing I like to do is give it a swing over just to make sure it does everything right. That'll confirm you haven't got anything wrong in the Conrod area or a tight piston or anything like that. I'll just go and do all the rest of them now. So here's how I died, how I um, kept an eye on what number of piston that was so you can see there's two little the tiniest little punch marks there two on that cylinder obviously cylinder two number one's got none two three and four probably could have gone just one dot two dot three dots no dots I don't know it's easy to work it out but anyway look and some paint nice and if all has gone to plan this should go around nice and nice. No problem. Okay, so we'll set him up on top dead centre. Ready for when the head comes back. Now I can't do another thing till the head comes back. I don't think. Well, I might be able to put a couple of accessories on the side of it maybe, but the <clears throat> head's got to go on next in the timing gear and then the timing case cover and then the sump can go on. <clears throat> so that's the process until I get the cylinder head back. So for now, uh, we're stagnant on that for the minute. Check it out. Have a good one. That's where you were sitting when you fell off. Had the back here propped up with a with a conrod bearing as soon as I touched the bench. <laughs> she all came down. Ah oh, well. Camera still works. <laughs>